Today we're doing a, a demonstration on aerospace process efficiencies using carbon fiber preforms. So what they're doing is, is they're uh, pulling back our vacuum bag that we're going to use to uh, debulk the carbon fiber preform. With the preforms, we can precisely position the fabrics in place. We don't have to worry about resin out life or, or working time for any resin system. In the fabric, we have a, a heat set binder. That allows us to, uh, we heat up the binder, activate it, and it holds the, the fiber in place. We can apply heat with an oven, uh, which would be um, the case for production operations, but for the demo purposes, we're using an iron. We can also use a heat gun, which you'll see a little bit later. Um, so this building a preform allows us to lay up several plies on fairly complex geometry, get the orientation right, make sure there's no wrinkles or uh, defects in the part. So with this particular preform, we're laying up eight plies of a fairly heavy carbon fiber fabric. As you can see, it's very conformable, very drapeable. Um, we kind of designed this tool to, to highlight the performance of the fabric. Um, you can see they're not using any, any scissors or, or cutting tools at all. The fabric will actually conform to this, uh, this pretty complex geometry. With low cost tooling, we could, we could actually build these preforms off site. That frees up our production tool. You know, we, could be, we could be infusing a part while we're still making preforms, or we can do it off-site altogether, nest the preforms, and transport them to the, the production site. So as I mentioned, this is going to be an eight-ply stack up. This is uh, the, actually the seventh ply in the stack. So they're going to get this one set in place and, and add an additional ply before we're finished with the preform. For the forming today, we used our Polytech MB2001 tooling board. This is a density of around 46 pounds per square foot. Um, it's a medium density. It's a brown board. Um, the machines very well. So for this one in particular, we used a half inch um, ball tip router bit to machine it out. Now with that being done for, we were able to machine it without having to do any sanding afterwards. So once it was cut, we were able to it look just like how it looks right now. So as you can see, we've, um, we've put down the, the uh, seventh ply. We're going to put the last ply on now, uh, position in place, activate the, the heat set binder and the material. Uh, many of you probably know A&P technology from our braided sleevings. But today we're actually looking at some of our fabrics where we take that sleeving and we slit it open and make a, uh, just a broad good out of it. Uh, we do that for a lot of different architectures, but really today we're focusing on our Kiso material. So Kiso is a zero plus or minus 60 degree triaxial braid. So our zero plus 60 minus 60. We've got 33% fiber in each one of those directions, giving us a quasi isotropic lamina. The other thing that we're highlighting with this demo is our capability of applying powder binders to the backside of our fabrics and all of our sleevings as well. Uh, today we're using a powder binder from Westlake Epoxy. We uh, apply all this at E&P so we can control the percentage of binder. So for today, we're using 10 GSM on one side only of this material. It's a 540 GSM fabric. So we're about 2% uh, by weight binder. Now, ideally, we would lay this whole thing up, um, bag it, we put it in an oven, right, and activate all the binder at once. Uh, but seeing we don't have a big enough oven here in the demo zone today, we're using just a clothing iron to basically go behind me as I'm positioning it and just tacking the layers together. Since this is the final layer here, we will go ahead and bag it and apply external heat like we would in an oven, but we're gonna do it with a heat gun. So Aerovac Composites One is one of the largest suppliers of processed materials worldwide with over 240 members, locations in Europe, North America, South America, uh, film manufacturing capabilities in Italy, um, and then kitting facilities in France, Italy, and then a new one that uh, is in Salt Lake City. 
all process material sites are AS9100 with, uh, of course, the uh, global distribution partnerships. So you can see on, on the vacuum bag, we already have all, all our pleats already in place. We have our, our sealant tape uh, already on the bag. So all we have to do is close it up. We have a, a port already in the bag. We just connect it with a, a small piece of breather material. Uh, it's a quick disconnect vacuum port. Um, and we'll hook it up to the vacuum pump. So now the bag is, is sealed uh, to our base plate and uh, we're evacuating all the air. You'll see the bag draw down. And as Doug mentioned, uh, this bag has the, the diamond embossed surface and uh, that allows for, for quick air extraction without the uh, need for an additional breather material. So now the, the bag is, is putting one atmosphere of pressure on our preform, really compacting it nice and tightly, and then we'll, uh, we'll apply some heat and activate the binder. So Dan's just using a heat gun to, to heat the binder up over 200 degrees, as, as Nathan mentioned earlier and he's monitoring it with an infrared thermometer and uh, just heating it locally. The vacuum bag material, the uh, 8171, is good to 400 degrees. So this is really the only, the only area where he's going to apply the, the additional heat. So now it, uh, the material is going to cool down pretty quickly. It's going to be set in place. We'll be able to re remove the back vacuum bag and demold our preform. And as I mentioned before, we'll be able to use this vacuum bag again and again to make several different preforms. So then we just release the preform from our mold. And then uh, it's, ready, it's ready for our production tool.